In this lecture, we're gonna be talking about else statements. So you might have been wondering why I didn't mention it in the first lecture about if statements, and that's because it kind of deserves its own lecture no matter how brief it is. So what is an else statement? Well, we already have our logic here where we're saying if our enemy health, I changed it to equal zero. If our enemy health equals zero, then set opacity to zero. So what that looks like, again, is something like this, and I can actually structure this a little bit differently. I'm not sure if the comments will let me do that though. Let's see, if the condition is met, Let's put, uh, I think I have to shift click this. If I shift click a comment, it's going to make a new line. I'm gonna put this, shift click, then do this action and close that out. So this is what a normal condition or a normal if then would look like in most languages. It's gonna look like this. If condition is met, then do this action. So what is an else statement? Well, it's actually the inverse of the condition. If the condition is not met, so it would be kind of like this. It would say if the condition is not met, or if you're used to programming, it would be like this. Saying not met is just by putting in a exclamation point. That's saying if the condition is not met, that's what that means. That means not. So another way to check to see if the condition is not met is to put in what is called an else statement. So we're gonna do it like this. Else, then do this instead and close that out. So that would be what an else statement looks like in normal syntax and in anything besides a visual editor. So how do we do this in Construct 2? Well, very simply, all I have to do is select my event that I want an else statement to have and then hit X on the keyboard. And now this will fire off the system object else condition. And if enemy health, whatever is on top of this else block right here, in this case it's enemy health, if this is not true, if enemy health does not equal zero, then it's going to be firing this off at 60 frames a second. So in this case, if it doesn't equal zero, then I'll put this to 100. So that way our player, or our enemy in this case, is always at 100 opacity unless it's dying. So that's very briefly how you can do else statements, but let's of course take this a step further. What we're gonna look at is what is called an else if statement. And this is important to understand because an else kind of acts as the catch all. It's going to catch anything that is not this condition. If this condition is not true, then it's going to catch it and immediately fire off this action. And that's what I'm trying to get here as this is our global catch object right here. It's our global else. And what we can do is we can save that for the very end, and before we get to that, we can actually filter out even more conditions by using an else if. So this is how it would look like in dummy code. It would look something like this. At the end of this closed bracket here, I can type in else if, and then we can open up another parenthesis, and we can say condition is met. And then we can open this up again, shift click, do this action, and then we can close that out. If I can shift, enter is what it was. And then let me do this again. So I can else if another condition is met and I can keep going and I can keep going and I can keep going until I am happy with all of the other things that I needed to filter out. And then I can finally end it with my global else right there at the end. And I realize that we have our global else up here so we can get rid of that, but that's what it would look like. Just imagine that we didn't have this guy do this instead. If do this action, there we go, something like that. And then we could do do this instead. So this may make sense to you if you've programmed before. It may not make sense to you if you've never done it before. But fortunately, we have Construct 2 to make this a whole lot easier on the eyes. So here's how we're going to do this. It's very simple. We're gonna control click this and drag it down. And now we've created an else if. Let's follow it as if it was up here. So if this condition is met, that's right up here. If this condition is met, then do this action. Else if, which would be right here, else, if this condition is met, then do this action. Now the only way, again, that this is getting fired off is if this condition right here is not true. If this is literally not true. Another way to make something not true, this is completely off topic, is you can invert these conditions by right clicking and hitting invert, or you can hit I on the keyboard on a condition. And now that's saying if the enemy's health is not equal to zero, uh, and that actually flips our statement 
entirely because this else will still get fired off. It's saying if it is equal to zero. So that's just a cool way that you can add in inversion, I guess, but not something I wanted to talk about in this lecture. So now, like our example here, we can copy and paste this again. Maybe our enemy health equals five, maybe it equals 10. And as we go down the chain here, we can say, okay, zero, the opacity is at zero. At five, the opacity is at five. And at 10, the opacity is at 10. Even though that won't make much of a difference, we could do it on a bigger scale, like 25 and 50. And then our global, if we make another else statement right here, would be 100. So that's how you can actually filter out using else if and else statements. So it kind of really can get more intuitive. And look at how much easier this is on the eyes, honestly, than doing this, even though this is in plain text, and it should make sense to you. And there's no harm in doing it that way in any other language. It's just nice that we have construct two to kind of filter this out. Now, one more thing that I want to do, I'm going to put this in a group here. And we're just going to call this if else and if else learn and else ifs just like this. Let's put this in here. And let's see what we can do with this actually. Let me just show you real fast that now you can even nest if statements. You don't have to put them in a group to do this. I just thought I would do that to make it, I don't know why I did that. Uh, let me show you this. So what I can do is I can even control click this down here and I can have this have an else statement and I can continue going on and on and on and on and on. And then we can do this and this. And you can see how this starts to get into sub levels of sub levels and usually you won't need that but construct2 does have that power so that is it for else statements hopefully you learned a lot maybe if you've never done this before you did and this is new to you maybe if you had done this before you kind of still learn something new or how to do this in construct2 and really again i think that construct2 displays logic really really well for beginners and for people who just want to get in and program without having to worry about all this syntax stuff thank you for watching this lecture and i'll see you in the next one